We're going to begin by installing the first site, which is Site A, onto a Windows 2012 server called Site A SSO. And I've inserted the DVD media. It's in my computer under the D drive. So let's right click that and say that we want to install and run programs. Give me a little warning here because UAC is turned on. We'll say yes, that we're cool with the install running. I'm pretty sure it's not viruses and such. And we're going to install single sign-on. It doesn't matter if this is a fresh single sign-on install, if it's an upgrade, if it's a vCenter server itself, or just a standalone single sign-on server. It doesn't really matter in this case. What we're configuring is multi-site single sign-on with 5.5. So it could be brand new install, upgrade, with vCenter or not. And it doesn't really affect the overall architecture of using multi-site SSO and 5.5. So I'm going to do the install on site A. And we're going to let the little packages unpackage themselves and get the wizard started here. Let's click Next. We'll accept the EULA. Let me just read it real quick to show that I read them. Yep, there we go. This is important, the prerequisites check. It's gonna make sure that you have the server name in DNS, both for forward lookups, which is an A record, and for reverse lookups, which is a PTR or a pointer record. So this machine is joined in my domain. The DNS looks successful. And this is a new screen to 5.5. Within the 5.1 environment, they just assume that you did this. So there was an assumption made that you'd already done the work and read the guide. And in reality, a lot of people did not. <laughs> so they put this in here and they're going to go ahead and say, would you like us to add the glacier.local, which is my lab environment, as an identity source with an SSO? And I'm fine having that checked. If for some reason you don't want this domain part of your SSO identity source list, just uncheck the box. Next, we need to pick a deployment mode for single sign-on. Now you'll see here that there's three options. There's the first vCenter server. There's an additional vCenter server in an existing site and an additional vCenter server in a new site. This kind of throws people off. What they're saying is, from a single sign-on perspective running 5.5, what do you have so far? And in this case, we only have one site that's going to be running 5.5. It's this site A. So this is our first vCenter single sign-on for our first vCenter server. We don't have anything else running single sign-on 5.5. We haven't established any of the sites yet. We don't have any single sign-on running that we could pair with and extend our authentication domain. So we're going to click Next on the first option. Now we need to pick a password for single sign-on because it doesn't exist yet. So let me put in my password that includes a lowercase, uppercase, special character, and number. And I'm going to do that twice. There we go. And if it doesn't like the password, it'll kick it back. And I recommend using something like an exclamation mark or a period for your special character. Historically, dollar signs and hash marks have caused problems. So now I get to name this site. We're making a brand new site because none exist. You could go with the default first site, but I don't know. That's a horrible name in my opinion. Let's make it descriptive. We call this site A. And that could also be something like Chicago or Milwaukee. It could be something like production in Chicago, whatever you want to call it. Or if you have multiple tenants, it could be the name of your tenant. Really, whatever makes sense for you. It doesn't really have to follow any kind of special naming format. You can't change the site name later, so get it right. And it's going to be a descriptive thing that you see within single sign-on. So it's not really involved from a vSphere perspective when you use the client. So we're going to click Next here. I'm going to accept the defaults for the HTTPS port for the installation directory, and I'm going to click Install. There we go. Single sign-on is now configured and installed on the site A single sign-on server. At this point, you'd want to install the other components, the web client, the inventory server, and the vCenter server itself. It could be on this server or on a different server, but that's out of scope for what we're doing here. We don't really care about those components. Let's move on to site B. So now we're on the site B SSO server, and I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So this is running Windows Server 2008 R2 Service Pack 1. I've already mounted the DVD. I'm going to go to the computer itself. There's the install. I'll right click and install and run from media. And let's connect this to our existing authentication domain for single sign-on and go ahead and create a new site. Again, I have UAC turned on just by default, so I'm gonna accept the little warning saying that this may be harmful to my computer. I know it's not. Got the same installer menu here. We're gonna to go to single sign-on. This time we're installing it for the site B. Click install. There's actually gonna be less to configure on site B because we've already done a little bit of the work with site A. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna point site B to the site A installation. We're gonna use some of that configuration to answer questions for site B. We're gonna make a relationship between the two and establish site B as a new site. Click next on the installer. Accept the EULA. Make sure to read it all. That looks great, I love it. Again, we wanna make sure that the prerequisite check passes. And in this case, my machine is joined to the domain. And I have a DNS A record and a pointer record for reverse lookup. And I'm fine with it adding the glacier.local as an identity source, although it's already been done at site A, so it really shouldn't have to do that again. 
Uh, but you can keep the checkbox checked. That's perfectly fine. We'll click next. So here's the moment of truth. Once you've already installed single sign-on, you could pretty much choose between this option for an additional vCenter server in an existing site, or this option for an additional vCenter server in a new site. The only reason you would choose the first option is if you want to keep your SSO domains isolated from one another. But here we want to extend our SSO domain across to site B. So I'm going to say this option, the third one, that it's a vCenter single sign-on for an additional vCenter server within a new site. This is site B. If we were adding another SSO server to site A, we would choose existing site, but we're making a new site called B, so we'll choose this option and click next. Now notice this is new, right? The partner host name. It wants to know what the SSO server is that already has the configuration so that we can extend out our authentication domain. So I'm gonna put in the name of my SSO server on the A site, which is called siteassso.glacier.local. I now need to provide the password that we put in for the SSO administrator account in the first part. There we go. So now I'm telling this site B SSO server that it needs to go reach out to site A and grab the configuration using the password for the administrator account that I'm providing here. We'll click next, telling me that it did locate the server and that it has a certificate and wants to know if we trust this certificate. You would want to go and look at the SHA-1 hash, which is revealed here, and make sure that they match. In this case, in my lab environment, it's very highly unlikely that someone snuck in here in the last minute and took it, and quite frankly, I don't care. We'll click continue. Now we need to name this new site, which is site B, so I'll just call it site B. Again, you can call it whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Click next, I'm going to keep the default HTTPS port. I'm going to install it in the default location, and we'll see here it's a new install. It's configured as an additional server in the SSO authentication domain. The domain name for SSO is vSphere.local, and it always will be. The partner name, which is the SSO server that's already been configured that we're going to reach out to, is the site A SSO server. The site that we're in, or the selected site name, is site B, and the partner site that we're going to pair with and grab the configuration from is site A. Because the source and site destinations are different, because we're at B and the other site is A, it's letting you know that the lookup service will be configured as a new instance. So click install. It's going to go through and install the components. Once it's finished, we'll have two SSO servers that share one configuration that is replicated amongst the two. So if you make a change in site A from an SSO perspective, it will populate in site B and vice versa. We can also use this to form a linked mode configuration because they're using the same SSO authentication domain. And that concludes setting up a multi-site environment with single sign-on version 5.5. Finish out with that finish, and that's it. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.